What you need to know about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The region is experiencing some of the worst violence it's seen in years. It's escalated from clashes in the streets to deadly rocket attacks and airstrikes. What's happening is the result of a number of different recent events. Palestinians have accused Israeli police of heavy-handed policing during Ramadan. Also, there have been viral social media posts of Palestinians attacking Jewish people, anti-Arab slogans being chanted by Israeli nationalists at a march through the streets, and a general increase in cases of harassment of Palestinians and violence by both sides. All of this is happening against the backdrop of a high-profile court case surrounding the potential eviction of Palestinian families from their homes in the East Jerusalem neighbourhood of Sheikh Jarrah. None of these events on their own may seem big enough to cause this level of violence, but the anger that we're seeing now is fueled by more than a century of tensions, war, oppression and trauma. So to properly understand what's going on now, you need to look back. Let's start with the basics. When we talk about Israel and Palestinian territories, we mean these areas. This is Israel, and this is Gaza and the West Bank, which are also known as occupied territories. Most of the people who live in Gaza and the West Bank call themselves Palestinians. They have their own governing bodies and speak mostly Arabic, whereas the official language of Israel is Hebrew. Within the UN, more than 130 nations currently recognise the state of Palestine. Others, like the United States, Israel and Australia, refuse. While violence between Israeli Jews and Palestinians isn't anything new, it wasn't always like this. Before the First World War, there was no Israel. All of this area was part of the Ottoman Empire and was home to many different ethnic groups and religions. While most were Arab Muslims, there were also Christians and Jews. After defeating the Ottomans in the First World War, Britain took control of this area, which became known as the British Mandate for Palestine. Meanwhile, the area was seeing a significant increase in Jewish migration. It had a lot to do with a movement known as Zionism, which aimed to create a Jewish state in the region, the ancient homeland of the Jews. This was something that the British leaders had shown support for, but Britain didn't explicitly promise a Jewish state or a Palestinian state as we would understand it. At this time, Jewish migrants bought land in the area, which increased tensions between Jewish nationalists and Palestinians, and led to some Palestinian peasants having to vacate lands their families had lived on and farmed, sometimes for hundreds of years. It also led to a Palestinian uprising against the British, who were supported by Jewish militia. The uprising was unsuccessful and led to far greater losses amongst the Arab forces. What followed in the late 1930s was a policy paper issued by Britain that included restrictions on Jewish immigration and land purchases, and angered Jewish nationalists, eventually leading to an insurrection by Jewish militias. Then came World War II and the Holocaust, one of the worst genocides in modern history that resulted in the deaths of six million Jews. By then, hundreds of thousands of Jewish refugees were stranded in Europe. After the war, Britain decided to hand Palestine's future to the UN. The UN then came up with a partition plan to split the region into two separate states, one Arab and one Jewish, with Jerusalem as a separate international territory. As you can probably guess, it didn't work out. The Palestinians thought it was unfair and rejected the plan because they were a considerable majority at the time, but were only assigned less than half the land. The Jewish leadership were also unhappy, but ended up agreeing to the decision and blamed the Arabs for initiating violence in the aftermath. On the 14th of May, 1948, Jewish leaders declared Israel an independent state. What followed was a war between the Israeli army and Palestinians, who had some support from neighbouring Arab states. By 1949, Israel had won the war and claimed more land than the UN's original partition plan. Jordan, which sided with the Palestinians, occupied land which became known as the West Bank, while Egypt occupied Gaza. Jerusalem, a city at the heart of the conflict and religiously significant to both Jews and Muslims, was divided between Israeli forces and Jordanian forces, although there was never an official peace agreement. Throughout this period, including time before the conflict, it's estimated hundreds of thousands of Palestinians became refugees in neighbouring countries and territories. 
Many had been forced from their homes. Others fled. Fast forward to 1967, and there was another war between Israel and its Arab neighbors. It's known as the Six Day War and ended with Israel controlling Gaza, the West Bank, and the Sinai Peninsula. Egypt and Israel signed a peace treaty in 1979, with Israel agreeing to withdraw from the Sinai Peninsula. But Gaza, the West Bank, and East Jerusalem continued to be occupied by Israel. Throughout this period, many Palestinians continued to push for independence. Israel also unilaterally annexed East Jerusalem in 1980, which basically means the forceful taking of one state's territory by another. Although in this case, it was technically the taking of an occupied territory. This annexation by Israel is considered illegal by the international community. In 1987, there was a Palestinian uprising known as an intifada, which involved a series of protests and violent riots. Israel was also criticized by some nations internationally for its strong response. All up, more than 250 Israelis and more than 1,900 Palestinians were killed, including many civilians. There were steps forward in the 90s, when Palestinian Liberation Organization leader Yasser Arafat met with Israeli PM Yitzhak Rabin and agreed to work towards a two-state solution. They came close, but didn't seal a final agreement. Then, in 2000, there was a second, more deadly intifada that lasted almost five years. And in 2005, Israel left the Gaza Strip. Just a quick side note, since 2005, Israel disputes that Gaza is occupied. However, Israel largely controls entry into Gaza and directly controls Gaza's maritime territory and airspace. So it's still considered by the international community to be part of the occupied territories. Hopes for peace were further complicated in 2006, when a militant Islamic group known as Hamas won the Palestinian election. The result led to violent clashes between Hamas and rival Palestinian party Fatah. Today, the Palestinian territory's leadership is divided. Hamas controls Gaza, while a coalition government dominated by the Palestine Liberation Organization and its biggest faction, Fatah, oversee the West Bank. Hamas has been labelled a terrorist organisation by the United States, the EU and Australia, but not by the United Nations. It's been criticised for targeting civilians and for rocket attacks on Israel, which are unguided but can be deadly. All of this history is an important part of understanding some of the reasons behind the conflict today. For the Jewish people, fear and trauma caused by the events of the past century as well as a number of wars with its Arab neighbours and decades of terrorist attacks, provide a bit of context to its behaviour over the years, which has been criticised for being aggressive and disproportionate. Palestinians, on the other hand, point to the displacement, discrimination, continuing settlement and daily life under military rule that they say they've faced during this period of time. Israel maintains tight control over Gaza's borders, with severe restrictions on what people and goods can come in and out of the territory. And in the West Bank, Israel has boots on the ground and significant control over everyday life. Over time, Israel's governments have allowed more and more Jewish settlers to move in, which has stirred up new tensions. Jewish settlements and forced expropriation of Palestinian land in the occupied territories are illegal under international law. It's important to note that there is a significant population of Palestinians who remained in Israel and are full citizens, although human rights groups say they still face discrimination. And a recent report by the non-governmental organization Human Rights Watch has accused Israel of acts of apartheid, persecution, and apparent deliberate attacks on civilians in Gaza. Back to the current situation. Israelis blame Hamas for escalating the conflict by firing rockets from Gaza at the Israeli civilian population, and that their aerial strikes on Gaza are a justified response. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has also said that militants will pay a heavy price for their actions. Palestinians argue that they're not the instigator of the violence and their rockets are in reaction to Israeli oppression and a part of an ongoing resistance to occupation. Also, that the conflict is imbalanced, as Israel has a far superior and more deadly military, 
which has contributed to more damage and a much higher death toll in Gaza in this conflict so far. By this point, hopefully you've got more of an idea of how this latest spate of violence escalated so quickly and why it has so many people worried. As with most conflicts, innocent people are being caught in the crossfire and leaders around the world are calling for calm. Things are changing quickly and many are hoping we're not seeing the start of another major round of violence in this part of the world. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to our channel and also check out the in-depth explainers playlist on the homepage, where we've covered everything from the Myanmar coup and the Armenian genocide to the future of North Korea.